Welcome to today's tutorial on type checking with prop types. Prop types is a useful tool for ensuring that the data passed between React components is of the correct type. Type checking is like having a bouncer at the nightclub, checking for IDs before letting people in. Just as a bouncer verifies that each person is of a legal age and has a valid ID, type checking verifies that the data we are passing to our component has correct data types and properties. And just like how a bouncer helps ensure a safe and enjoyable experience for everyone at the nightclub, type checking with prop types can help prevent bugs and improve the overall quality and maintainability of our code. Let's see how we can use it. Code with Sloba. Let's create a simple user component that displays a user's name and age. First, let's import React library from the React package. Now, let's define a new functional component called user. The component takes a single parameter props, which is an object containing the properties Pass to the component. Next, let's define the body of the user component. Let's return a JSX expression that renders a div element containing the two H2 elements. The content of each H2 element is determined by the name and age properties passed to the component via the props object. So type the label name and access the name property from the props. Copy this line and do the same for the age. And in the bottom, export the user component as default export of this module, allowing other modules to import it and use the component in their own code. In this component, we're passing two properties to the user component, name and age. However, we haven't specified what type of data these properties should be. This means that we could pass in anything we want, such as a string for age or a number for name, and the component would still render. This is where the prop types come in. First, we need to import prop types from the prop types package. Next, we need to add a prop types object to our component. So, add a prop types object to the user component. Next, define a property of prop types object called name. It specifies that the name property should be required string type. This means that if the name property is not passed to the user component, or if it's not a string, a warning message will be shown in the console. Similarly, define a property of the prop types object called age. It specifies that the age property should be required number type. This means that if the age property is not passed to the user component, or if it's not a number, a warning message will be shown in the console. Just to sum up, the prop types object is a property that is defined on a component to describe the expected data types and the properties of props object that the component receives. Now if you pass in wrong type of data, prop types will throw an error. Let's take a look at the example. Import the user component in our app component. For the name property, let's pass a John. And for age, let's pass in a string instead of a number. When we try to render component, we will get an error in the console. The error message tell us exactly what went wrong. We pass a string when a number is expected. By using prop types, we can catch these errors early and prevent them from causing problems later on. If we update our age to be a number, the error goes away. Easy. Now, let's create a more complex component that displays a list of users. Each user will have a name, age, and email property. So create a new file and name this file userList.js. Import React from React again. Define a new functional component called UserList. The component takes a single parameter again, which is an object containing a user's property. This is using destructuring syntax to extract the user's property from the props object. Next, let's define the body of the user list component. It should return a JSX expression that renders an unordered list containing list items for each user in the user's array. The map method is used to iterate over the user's array and generate a list item for each user.
Each list item contains three span elements, which display name, age, and email of the user. The key attribute is set to the user email property, which is a unique identifier for each list item. Next, add a prop types object to the user list component. The prop types object again is a property that is defined on a component to describe the expected data types and properties of the props object that component receives. Just to sum up, and now let's define a user's property on the prop types object, which specifies the expected shape of the user's array passed to the user list component. The prop types array of method is used to specify that the user property should be in the array of objects where each object conforms to a certain shape. Please don't forget to import prop types from prop types in the import section. The prop types dot shape method is used to specify the expected shape of each object in the user's array. It takes an object with keys that corresponds to the expected properties of each object and values that describe the expected type of each property. In this case, the shape method is used to specify that each user object should have the name, age, and email properties, which are all required. The name property should be string, the age property should be a number, and the email property should be a string. And we add is required modifier, which is used to indicate that the user's property is required as well, meaning that if it's not passed to the user list component, a warning message will be shown in the console. And just export default user list at the end. Now, if we pass an array of user object with missing or incorrect properties, prop types will throw an error. Let's take a look at an example. Import user list in the app component. Let's pass an array of users to the user's property. Let's just create a name and age for both of these users. Here, we're passing an array of user objects with missing email properties. When we try to render the component, we get an error message in the console. The error message tells us exactly what went wrong. The email property is missing. By using prop types, we can catch these errors early on and prevent them from causing problems later on. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.